Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2, and today we're going to answer that age old question of Will my processor work with this motherboard? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to answer some questions about motherboards, processors, and RAM, and more specifically, their compatibility with each other. Now on a daily basis I get questions come through related to the motherboard videos that I've posted and CPU videos I've posted saying will this processor, insert processor name here, work with this motherboard, insert motherboard name here. And to be honest with you it's very very easy to find out these things for yourself. So what I'm going to do in this video today is go through some of the easy things you can do for yourself to find out if the processor that you want to use in your system is compatible with the motherboard that you've chosen and obviously vice versa. Now first things, prerequisites, the best thing to do first of all, in my personal opinion, is to have a processor in mind where you're aiming for, budget wise and performance wise. And also likewise, have some kind of inkling of what sort of motherboard you want, what sort of features you need. That is going to help you a great deal, working out what is going to work with what. Now generally, you can find with most motherboards, especially on the AMD side of things, most of the systems are generational. And what I mean by that is, a lot of the processors came out at the same time as the suitable boards for those particular processors. So if you're looking at the AMD original Ryzen series, the 1000 series, like the 1700s, then boards like the B350, the X370 and the A320 would be absolutely fine. And likewise, if you're going for the kind of Zen replacements, which were the 2000 series, so like a 2700 processor, would work really well with like a B450, an X470 or boards of that kind of nature. So generationally, if you try and keep them together, you're pretty much gonna be absolutely okay. The real problems arise when you try and change generations. So say for instance, if you wanna use something like a older X370 motherboard with a slightly newer Athlon 200GE, obviously you probably don't wanna do that, but this is for example's sake. So this is the kind of second generation of chips. This is the first generation of boards. So you're not always guaranteed that the board is gonna work. It may well need a BIOS update. It may well have one already, depending when and where you've bought the board from. There are lots of variables, but there are some things you can do for yourself. Like I said, checking out on the motherboard's website to see if it's actually compatible at all. So what we're gonna do is now go over to the computer and take a look at a few motherboards and some examples and see what works with each other. And then when we've done that, we'll come back and we'll talk about RAM. Okay, so first of all, let's take a, a motherboard. So let's type in a320, the A320 M-A Pro Max is one we looked at quite recently. So let's look at some of the compatibility. So first of all, it says it supports first, second, and third gen AMD Ryzen processors. So that's a pretty good start. Now, let's say for instance, on this particular board, we're gonna be wanting to pair it with a 3200G, for instance. So what we'd need to do is go to the support section for the motherboard. And then what we can do is in the support section, you should have an action for compatibility. You may have to search around for it, but there it is, so compatibility. So we click on compatibility, and then we get all sorts of options. So we can break it down by CPU generation, or compatible devices, all that kind of stuff. We can look at memory, but we wanna look at CPU. So we'll click on CPU, that's already highlighted, and that's where we are. So all we need to do now is to scroll down through this list and find our processor. So we're looking for a 3200G which is of a Ryzen 3. So there we go. There is the Ryzen 3, the Picasso, and 3200G, 3.6 gigahertz, as we're expecting. So that processor is compatible with the motherboard, although the caveat is that it does need to have that particular BIOS revision on it pre-installed. So if it doesn't have this from the factory, this is where we can run into problems. So in some instances, you can get a board which is something like the uh, Max Editions, or you can get the ones which have BIOS flashback. Now that is gonna cost you a little bit more money, but you are gonna future-proof yourself slightly and also avoid any potential issues. Also, a lot of manufacturers will actually flash BIOSes for you if you ask them nicely for a small charge. I know for sure quite a few of the UK distributors will quite happily flash the uh, BIOS for you especially if you're buying a chip and a board at the same time, they'll make sure that it's all running for you straight out of the box. So now the next thing to do is to work out if your motherboard actually has the BIOS installed already. Now on this particular one, it looks like most of them actually are that particular edition. So 
there was, yeah, there's a later one. So on that particular board, the Pro Max version with that chip, we're pretty much guaranteed that's gonna come straight away. And um, what we can do also, if we look into, into the support section, go into downloads, we can go into BIOS and we can look at the BIOS revisions. So looking at this, the very first BIOS revision for this motherboard was the uh, 7C52- or sorry, V20, which is the one which is appropriate for the 3200G. So we know that the original BIOS release for that board is for that chip, so it is guaranteed to work out of the box. Obviously, if there's any uh, problems with the chip or motherboard itself, that is gonna cause problems, but in theory, the processor should just sit on the board, power it up, and it should work first time. Now, if we needed a processor which needed the newer BIOS, the V21, you'd have to be hopeful that that BIOS had already been installed from the factory. This is where you run into problems with used boards, but generally, if you're buying a brand new retail package from sort of reputable suppliers like Amazon and things like that, where they keep relatively new stock, you should find that whatever board you're buying will come with the latest BIOS. So there's a pretty good example of knowing if your CPU or APU is gonna work straight out of the gate with your chosen motherboard. But what about RAM? RAM is another key problem. Now, a lot of RAM sticks, such as these ones from Silicon Power, they will quite happily run all day long at their lowest rated speeds, which is like 2133 or 2400 DDR, which is the core specs for DDR4. But most people want to use them at their XMP profile settings, or the expanded or extended memory profile. For that, you need to have support in the motherboard for it. So generally, if you put in the model of the RAM, which you can find generally quite clearly written, although quite small, actually on the RAM itself, or you may actually find it on the back of the packaging when you buy the RAM, you can check those out and do exactly the same as what we did previously. Go into the support section for your motherboard, go into memory and check to see if that particular model number is listed for your particular motherboard. If it is, fantastic. You shouldn't have any problems at all. It'll work straight out of the box, even with the XMP settings enabled. But what do you do if your memory isn't listed? Now this is where we can get into real problems. You can just try and enable XMP and fingers crossed it'll work straight away. But generally what I find it easier to do is to go into the BIOS, go into the memory settings and actually manually enter the data. So if you look on your memory chip, you'll see a string of numbers which will give you your timings. All you need to do is to put those timings as they are on the chip into the BIOS, save and exit, and you're good to go. At least more times than not. So there are some tips and tricks on how to get your motherboard and processor and RAM all working together or to actually find out if they are even likely to work together. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to click on subscribe and all that kind of stuff to find the latest video releases. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.